Do you remember the flick Fatal Attraction? It might help us peer into the psychological substructure of the Ford Kavanaugh issue where a woman's attraction in the movie ripened into a fatal obsession. I've got to see you. This is going to stop. No, it's not going to stop. It's going to go on and on. She keeps calling me apart. Hello? Now, Dr. Ford says that the alleged incident didn't stop decades ago. But like a vague flashback, it goes on and on somewhere deep in her clouded memory bank. Let's talk about the gathering at, uh, up from the time you arrived till right be when you went up the stairs, just that period of time, okay? What was the atmosphere like at the gathering? Um, the, Mr. Kavanaugh and Mr. Judge were extremely inebriated. They had clearly been drinking prior, and the other people at the party were not. Um, the living room Can I was ask you just to follow up on that? When you said it was clear that they had been drinking prior, do you mean prior to the time you had gotten there or prior to the time they had arrived? Pri prior to the time that they arrived. I don't recall who arrived first, though, whether it was me or them. Okay. Please continue. Okay. Strange, this smile of hers. She's recalling an event that made havoc with her life to this very day. Yet she swerves between anguish and glee. Okay, please continue. Okay. So I recall that the, I, could, I can sketch a floor plan. Um, I recall that it was a spar sparsely furnished, fairly modest living room. Uh, and it was not really a party, like the news has made it sound. Uh, it was not. It was just a gathering that I assumed was going to lead to a party later on that those boys would attend. Those boys, please note, Fort already singled out as Kavanaugh and Judge. Now, please continue, Dr. Ford, with your little girl coquettish anguish and caprice. Besides the music that you've described that was playing in the bedroom, was there any other um, music or television or anything like that that was adding? No. Okay, so there wasn't a stereo playing downstairs? No. Okay. Certainly. Dr. Ford, thank you uh, for being here. You would not mix up somebody else with Brett Kavanaugh, is that correct? Correct. Or Mark Judge? Correct. Well, then let's go back to the incident. What is the strongest memory you have? Strongest memory of the incident, something that you cannot forget. Take whatever time you need. Indelible in the hippocampus is the laughter, the, la the uproarious laughter between the two, and they're having fun at my expense. You've never forgotten that laughter. You never forgotten them laughing at you. They were laughing with each other. Those two boys, Kavanaugh and Judge, please note, were laughing with each other at Ford. And you were the object of the laughter? I was, you know, underneath one of them while the two laughed. Two, fr two friends having a really good time with one another. The two laughed, Ford said having a really good time with one another while she was, in her words, underneath one of them. Here, at a critical part of her story, Ford can't cough up Kavanaugh's name as the boy she was under. If Kavanaugh and Judge are laughing with each other, then who is Ford underneath? Me thinks that her 100% recall that it was Kavanaugh must be objected to. Speaking of which... Michael Bromwich, Ford's leading lawyer, along with Katz, has his own objection. Dr. Ford, um, we were talking about you meeting in July with Congresswoman Eshoo. Yes. Uh, did you talk about your allegations with any Republican member of Congress or congressional staff? I did not. Where I live, the uh, Congresswoman is a Democrat. Okay. Um, was it communicated to you by your counsel or someone else that the 
committee had asked to interview you and th that they offered to come out to California to do so? We're going to object, Mr. Chairman, to any uh, call for privileged conversations between counsel and Dr. Ford. Enter Lindsey Graham, an experienced courtroom prosecuting lawyer who leaps into the fray. It's a privileged would, would, could, could, we, could you validate the fact that the offer was made without her saying a word? Is it possible for that question to be answered without violating any uh, consul relationships? Can I say something to you? Do you mind if I say something to you directly? Yeah. Um, I just appreciate that you did offer that. I wasn't clear on what the offer was. If you were going to come out to see me, I would have happily hosted you and had you had been happy to speak with you out there. I just did not. It wasn't clear to me that that was the case. But it was clear to her lawyers, Bromwich and Katz, who, on Ford's behalf, saying she appreciated the committee's various options, declined the offer. Legal malpractice is now being pursued by Graham and Senator Cotton, aimed at Bromwich and Katz. Mixing politics with jurisprudence is illicit business. Bromwich, by the way, also owns his own PR firm. Surely the hidden hand behind Ford's newly acquired public face, which vaunts that it implements strategies to tell a client's story so as to shape public perception. But is the public so dumb to perceive that Ford is a victim in distress? The perception the unbiased eye sees here is a cat swallowing the canary. Look... I don't want to cast aspersions on anyone, but when an accuser comes forth with tales of ancient reminiscences, we do have a natural urge to cross-examine. I mean, I wonder if Dr. Ford has some fatal fixation. Is this what Senator Graham is pointing to? On Sean Hannity's yeah. pro program, you seem to suggest she has a problem. I want to play that. I am now more convinced than ever that he didn't do it that he's the right guy to be on the court, that Ms. Ford has got a problem, and destroying Judge Kavanaugh's life won't fix her problem. She has yeah, a problem? Yeah, yeah I, I think she does. So what's the problem? That the pursuit of an apparent villainy springs from emotional and mental causes? That some psychological disorder using choking boys, frowns, and wide mouth smiles can turn a Senate committee into a hall of judgment complete with objecting lawyers? Or perhaps that Bromwich, Katz, and company, unelected representatives of unsubstantiated accusations, can turn Capitol Hill into a PR scheme to bring a decent man down. This may be the fatal fixation from which our falling country may never recover.